So let's talk about the World Cup. Finally, the game is over. Mexico won. So that's the only thing that... <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> but, yeah. Matt Green is here with us, Jack Philly, and of course, Matt Gutman. So, great news, right? Yeah, 5-1. to one. You guys did it. Uh, okay. I still got to play another game to see what the result will be. But uh, let's look at the big picture, first of all. There's uh, 32 countries that are going to make the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And right now, <laughs> 21 countries have gotten a spot. So that means there's 11 up for grabs. Uh, and, and today... There were four countries that were playing each other. You just mentioned yeah. Mexico and New Zealand, also Uruguay and Jordan, and Uruguay beat Jordan 5 nothing. So they play today. They'll figure out the ultimate winner next week, and there's a lot more to go over the next week and a half or so. So, Maddie, <laughs> any Cinderella <laughs> stories happening here? I know Mexico's yeah. not quite a Cinderella story. It isn't, but it isn't. There's, there's, uh, the great thing about the World Cup is that every country has a story. Uh -huh. And uh, w one of the things I really like is the story of Iran. Uh, just a few days ago, the president of FIFA said that they could even host some games uh, in uh -huh. 2022 which is just a new dawn for Iran. I mean, when you, th when you think about uh, a year ago, Ahmadinejad, they were the axis of evil. And, uh, and now there's talk that they could play a friendly match with the United States. And then the <laughs> yeah, State Department is, is even amazing what a in ball Tehran. Can do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's Iran. It's soccer diplomacy. It's amazing so. what a ball can do. I mean, you know, like he said, you have a regime change, and then all of a sudden you have Iran saying that they could... Uh, Sepp uh -huh. Blatter saying Iran could host games to help alleviate the pressure off of uh, Qatar. Because Qatar's such a tiny nation, they've uh -huh. recommended air-conditioned stadiums and all that. But, you know, I know the one thing that Matt and I were really uh -huh. curious before coming on here, and I know you were curious. How, how much is going to cost? Exactly. No? You'll be in researching about that. Exactly. We have, so, and, so what do you, you have? Know, we, what we did was we didn't go to, like, any FAA or anything like that. We went yeah. to just random, we like, uh -huh. re websites like, you know, kayak.com, Cheapo Air, just to get a gauge so of it. So what are the numbers? And, well, if you fly from Miami, since the draw hasn't been set yet, that's going to be next month. If you uh -huh. fly from Miami to Salvador... And then you go to a game there. A couple days later, you leave from Salvador, go to Party Central in Rio. Uh -huh. Then you spend a couple days in Rio, obviously forgettable, non-forgettable ones. Uh -huh. And then you go from Rio to Curitiba, which is right outside Sao Paulo. Then you go to the games there. It's three group games, only three group games. And you go back to Miami. Take a guess at how much that would be. I don't know. $1,500? $2,500. So just, that's just, just for it. That's just for the flights. Just for the flights. You're not even including... It's a beautiful game. Yeah. Yeah. Not, you're not, for you're not even including air... You're not even including hotel, food, or anything or like that. tickets to the game. And tickets yeah. to the game. Tickets to the game could run you anywhere from $300 to $600. That's pricey. But, uh, you know, is it that much more expensive than seeing something like the Olympics? I mean, these are huge spectacles. Yeah, the Olympics are a, sort of a different thing because the Olympics, they're a two-week event, and they happen every single day, whereas in the World Cup, you have some sort of off days. You know, uh, you only get to see your team yeah. unless you want to space it out. And you Under want to nine see days, you're only, you're only getting three games in there. Oh, so you could get stuck for a while in Brazil. I mean, and you could be worse things. Things. Yeah. 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 Let me ask you, so, so who are the favorites? It's, it's, who, who's uh, going gonna to win? This is a big debate between Jack and me, but we almost like Thank you so much with Mexico. No Mexico is not going to win the World Cup. We almost came to, we almost came to close in the newsroom uh -huh. about well, who we think. Obviously, but obviously Spain, they're the reigning champions. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a lot of weight behind them. I know Jack likes Germany a lot. I really like Germany. I think Spain, they, have the, they, have, they certainly have the talent. They have the system. They have the same coach. But uh -huh. I think everybody's sort of figured out exactly what the Spaniards are going to do with that tiki-taka uh -huh. football type. I think the Germans, with their youth and, you know, just their overall brute size, I think, they, I think they're destined. They've don't been to three, count out the last home, three semifinals. Don't oh. count out the home team, well, Brazil. Brazil I mean, is going to be always amazing it's, in Brazil. They're huh? the biggest soccer country in the planet. They've won more World Cups than anyone, and now they have the home field advantage. But the biggest question is, are they going to be ready? There has been... Huge that question about sure. whether or not true. these stadiums are going to be ready. Millions right now, dollars. it seems like they're not... We could also see riots there. There have been a lot of there was bus talk, riots there recently. There was even talk that the United States should absorb the responsibility and host the World Cup. Oh, right. I, that, that, would be, that would be a Brazil. 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 Miami, it, would, it, would take, Brazil. it would take astronomical it's chances for that to happen. It'll be in Brazil. Uh -huh. I mean, we see this a lot. We saw yeah. this in South Africa. But, you know, very cool. When I went uh -huh. down there, I saw the infrastructure. I saw yeah. the stadiums in March, and I saw some of the rail lines. Were, were they ready? No, were they, no. Not at all. And even the people of Brazil who are protesting outside the soccer stadiums, they are livid that they're getting shafted on health care and education. And, it's and, six, seven months. How are they going to do it? It'll be a, <laughs> they'll have the, to pray that's to a great question. They have another sure. deadline coming up. I think Jerome Vackel, the Secretary General for yeah. FIFA, I think is going back down there to check the progress. But, you know, it's like the Brazilians saying, no, it's, it's going to be ready. La, la, let me ask you finally. Mm -hmm. So is the U.S. any power right now? Is, it, is there a possibility that the U.S. might win? <laughs> Not a power. I don't uh -huh. think not a power yet. However, they're a power in CONCACAF, uh -huh. um, as expected. But I think 
Uh, this, this is probably the best talent they've had in quite a while, mm -hmm. and I'd like to see them advance past the round of 16 and into the round prediction. of eight. My prediction round of eight. For, round for, for the U.S., Bold. their best round in recent memory was 2002 when they made it to the round of eight, and who did they lose to? Mm -hmm. Germany. But I think if they make it to the round of eight, I, as an American, or as a Hispanic American, there excuse me, uh, I think I'll be, I'll be very content. Okay. You know, Matt, that, thank you, know, you, so you know that soccer's been more popular in the U.S. than it's ever been before. Exactly. So. Matt, thanks so much. Jack, oh. thanks so much for helping us here. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and that's our America Today. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Thank you.